coach, one day away from facing Portland. A lot of stakes in this game. So how are you preparing the team? Well, the preparation began, you know, after a good week of training, you know, a longer week, uh, trying to mix it up, trying to keep them sharp. But, you know, a couple days ago they were a little grumpy because they want the game to be here. So today was a little more relaxed, you know, normal match day minus one. I'm glad we came here to the stadium, you know, just get the feel of it again. So it's been good. Do you want players to be amped up about all the things that are on the line tonight or mostly just focused on rivalry for us? Uh, we, we balanced it. Look, obviously, Cascadia Cup, Portland are our rivals. Those are the historical kind of things that we always try and message before the game. Uh, you know, have we touched on the losing streak? No, because they probably read the press. Um, uh, do we talk to them about establishing third place? Yes. Uh, keeping them down in ninth so they have to go away for a play-in game. I mean, there's certain messages that we give, yeah. But, you know, it's Cascadia Cup and it's our rival. When it comes to emotions and feeling this game a little bit different, what's the balance there? I mean, do you want players to go out, give it their all, but there's always that balance. There was a little dust up last, well, not the last game, but the previous game, the game where we won 2-1, to one, you know, knew who got a yellow card, a little dust up with mascara. Uh, we want to avoid that. I want them to play hard. I want them to play physical. But, you know, we don't want it to become a wrestling match or, a, you know, a bunch of cards. We want a good soccer match. What does uh, Obed's... What do you see different from a player in Obed's situation who, you know, gets their first national team call up, gets their first cap? And then comes back to, to you guys and uh, for a big game. I mean, like, how like, do you tap into that sort of emotional momentum? Well, <clears throat> he's done it on his own. I mean, I don't have to message any of that. He's obviously uh, very proud of that moment. Uh, we did acknowledge it when he came back. You know, like we acknowledge when the, all the internationals come back if there's something significant there. Uh, it, it's, it's been tried and true. I mean, guys would always come back from a good national team camp or a good experience. It shows up in their league play. I think that's, I think that's natural. And does he have the kind of personality where you don't necessarily need to worry about it being like, going to his head and yeah. changing it in the wrong way? He's, he's very humble. Don't have to worry about that at all. Ryan, we asked, uh, we asked Georgia yesterday what it, what it meant for him to to be at, a, at an organization that promotes uh, the growth of players, not only from a, from a development piece, but you know, going to their national team and, and allowing them to, to be themselves and develop into themselves. You have been with the club for a long time. You've seen a lot of people achieve those, those things. What, is that, what does that mean for you still at, this, at, this ten, at, at the length of your tenure to, to see players like Ovid come through and develop? Jose's calling me old, length of my tenure. I'm trying not to. I, 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 I caught that. Uh, look, it's a source of pride. You guys know me by now. I mean, the, the organization has done a great job. From the early days, even when, you know, Darren Sawatsky and some of those guys started the academy, uh, signing good young talents uh, and watching them develop homegrowns. Uh, you know, we've had a wide range of players come here and develop to be the best players person and soccer player they can be and I'm certainly proud of that I think Obed's a, a shining example of that coming down from Alaska finding a home Georgie's another example you know knew who made it maybe paved the way there uh, but there's plenty of success stories there's some well, there's some failures too I mean look we have to we have to own that up as well but for the most part I think we do a good job of giving guys opportunities to develop to their potential what's the key to getting your team to play their best soccer at the end of the season. We've seen it obviously last year and this year as well, but you've done it multiple times in your career. Uh, <clears throat> well, I mean, every group is a little different. Every team, you know, ups and downs during the season, you learn little bits and pieces and things. And uh, I think it's just combining all the stuff you learn throughout the course of the year and you try and apply those things. And, you know, at the end of the day, the players are always the ones that do the heavy lifting. They're always the ones that have to make plays on the field. We help them. We give them the right tools, but you know, mostly it's them. Pedro, I guess coming from probably his best performance of the season. Where's he at? What have you seen from him this week? 
seen great things from him. He's gonna, he's excited to play. He had a good performance down there last time we played there, the two-one game. He was good down there. When it comes to a Portland team that tends to push their fullback as much as they do, especially Mosquera, does that open up a space for you guys to expose them? Yeah, the right side definitely different than the left side for them, but same with us. I mean, our right side is different, so it's an interesting battle, interesting matchup. How, you know. How are they going to play? Are they going to come all out? Are they going to be a little cautious? What did they do? We'll see. Going back to Pedro, do you feel like at this point he's as integrated in, in tune with the guys around him as he's been all year? Yes, all year. I, I still think there's room there. I think there's still room to get a little better. But, you know, it's good that he's out and he's healthy and he feels confident. He's strong. It's good. What kind of reports did you get from Reed, or what did you see from Reed when he was with the U-20s? Well, we got all the physical data, you know, all that sort of stuff. But, you know, Reed's the same thing. Josh, today, this earlier this year with the Olympics uh, and his January camp. I mean, guys that go away, guys, young guys like that, again, it's back to Jose's question. The opportunities, they come back better. The attendance has been a little bit spotty this season, I believe not as consistent. What's your expectation for tomorrow's game? And how important is going to be that extra support from your fans? They always support us. Fans that are in the building always support us. I heard they're opening up the third, the upper deck, so that's a positive sign for me. But, you know, the business guys, they'll do a good job. We'll have a full house. It's Portland. You like when it can be this kind of weather for a Love it. game like this? Love this. <laughs> Love it. Coach, is the last game of the season playing Portland does it make it any different than other last games? Cascadia Cup. <clears throat> this is a. I think this is the first time in history that the Cascadia Cup is on Decision Day. Uh, maybe. Well, the first time here, but you guys had at Vancouver. In 2019. Was it 21? Okay, that was a four-game series, though. Right, we were doing four games. I mean, you played the or each team I, twice. I don't remember, but you guys played okay. at Vancouver on the final day of the season. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's important. Cascadia Cup's important. Beating them here would be a nice way to end the season, yes. But let's, you know, let's make sure the team plays up to their potential. That'll give us the best chance. What would you say is the biggest difference for you guys offensively since the last time you played Portland? Uh, just run a form. I mean, they were our last loss. So we brought that up. How's your relationship with, with Phil Neville? And, and, you know, that, that Portland Sounders around is always kind of interesting. So how is that? He's a very famous guy, uh, good-looking guy. Uh, we have a good rapport. Uh, it's it's good. You know, we, we've talked periodically this year about Jordan's growing into the number nine, and I suppose one of the boxes that he hasn't really been able to check is scoring uh, against Portland recently. Uh, I mean, how big of a game? A significant goal against Portland, yeah. yeah. He'll get there. I have confidence in him. He'll get there. When it comes to the end of the year awards, it seems like not a lot of like players like Gamer and Jackson, despite their great form, aren't really there uh, you, yourself when it comes to uh, Coach of the Year. Is there anything ever comes up to you and bothers you about maybe your guys? You missed one, one name as well. It's Jackson, Yamar, Stefan Fry. You get the best new who. You've got the best defense in the league, and yet, I mean, there's some questions there for sure. There are a lot of guys who haven't beaten Portland here at home, at least in this team, so how much of a hunger is there to, to end that winless streak here since 2017 against Portland? Well, listen, I asked them to think about, reflect on the individual reasons why they want to come out and have a good performance tomorrow. We talked about the Cascadia Cup team goals, but then I challenged them as individuals. We'll see what we get. Coach, uh, the last game, uh, we said the team in terms of uh, mentality. And this, this season was past season. You know, the team had up and down. Every but season does. Yeah, every season, but this one in particular. Uh, this is the last game that sets the team to be ready for the next, the last part of the season. Well, our last stretch of games has gotten us ready for the playoffs. I think we're statistically and, you know, also on the field playing.